two, and we're live. Welcome. Mang and Need Show, Sonic Garden Radio Live, what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Sonic Gardens Radio and the Mang and Need Show. Here we are. I'm back here in the control room. Uh, opening song here, that's by uh, uh, Cosmic Theo out of Ithaca. Check him out. He's got some really good stuff. Uh, and uh, I met that guy at the Ithaca Fest a couple years back. Huh. All right, so uh, we're looking to get 1,000 subscribers. If anybody out there can give us a hand and uh, help us out on that mission and just give us a uh, thumbs up, that would be great. Hey, it looks like right away we're getting a caller in here. Oh, some douchebag. Or... <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> uh, must be our friend. You're live on the Mang and Need Show. Oh, right I'm so- now. I'm sorry, you're not a douche. But shaking. Not like much, you. man. Here, I'm gonna call you right back on the uh, hotline. All right. Okay. All right, buddy. Sounds like he's in a cylinder. Yeah, that was. Uh, that's why we're trying to get it linked through a little better. Uncle on our, uh, Linky. On our little system, you know. All right. Make way, man. Mang and Need Show. Sonic Garden Make Radio. Way. Yeah. Make so way. here we are. This is uh, day number 25, right? Oh, shoot. I mis- mislabeled this show again. Every- oh. Oh, my gosh. Oh. I'm, a day- a I'm a day late here. We need a secretary. Well, we're, uh, you know, due to the current situation in the we world. We can't have one. We are limited in our uh, ability I've been limited my whole life. I'm used to it, so so it's all right. So it's <laughs> so it's all right. What are we doing? All right, I was having a hard time with my uh, call. Oh, uh, hi. My uh, button button hitting. Watch Yo. You can't hey, hey Ryan, how you doing, buddy? Ryan Mr. Ryan oh. Revoir. That's how Siri says your name. Oh. Nice. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I man. Can. Nice. I'll try and give Just you. Just call to say what's up. Yeah. Hi, Josh, Rhino. Bit, so. Hi, Rhino. Yeah, Josh. Josh, you can't hear Josh though, huh? Hold on. No, I wonder. Yeah, Josh disappeared. Like I just see the backdrop. But I see oh yeah, that was from. Uh, oh. Yeah, he's just getting rid of me. He's, yeah, you he's see me right through just there. Got, got me off. Yeah, of you're me. you're on my screen. Well, now I'm seeing like double. Or like you're drunk. Um. All right. Sounds so like yeah, man, I haven't I haven't now. heard I haven't heard from you in a while. So uh, shoot, let's uh, so fill me in, man. What you been up to lately? 
Nothing, man. Just doing what you're supposed to do, I guess. Social distance if you're not working. Yeah, right. I've uh, gone to Utica a few times. We're working on some hand sanitizer, stuff like that. But uh, Taking your time? Yeah. Well, let today me... Uh, I have, today I didn't have to go in, so... Let me try this audio back so I can three-way Josh in so he's not a backseat, uh, backseat conversation guy. It drives him nuts. Drives him okay. nuts up there. Fucking nuts. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. Not on the not on the main thing. Wait, what? You got him on video? He called me on FaceTime. Oh, what a nice guy. Call me up. We'll FaceTime the, uh, him, too. <laughs> Are you calling me? Uh, Yep. Okay, there we go. Huh. And now I'm going to add... Uh, I'm going to add Josh to this uh, oh, You could call. FaceTime me. We could have done a three-way FaceTime. Uh, it just I know, it wasn't. I know. It's a joke. It was a joke. It was, uh, You're supposed to laugh. Hit the oh, laugh Oh, it wasn't. Button. <laughs> Hit the laugh button. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Uh, uh, give me just a second. Oh, shit. What happened? Ryan, you're trying to FaceTime me. Hello. Hello. Can you see me? Oh, man. No. I'm not wants- trying to see you. He's a- <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm trying to audio you. He wants to see you. He no. wants you to see him. <laughs> this is fun. We should do this every oh, day. Oh, man. Just call people. Right, and- struggling, struggling. <laughs> I like it. It's fun. FaceTime audio. Here I'm we go. having fun. All righty. Good. All right, Ryan, you can hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, I'm going to three-way Josh because yeah. our system is not working properly. So just hold on for me a second. Just hold right. on, man. Come on. Rhino. Are you listening to Aaron Burnett? <laughs> What's she doing working already? I thought she didn't work till seven. Here we go, Josh. All right. Can you hear me now? I can. All right, cool. Trying to merge these calls here. Got it? Ryan? Yep. You there? Oh, it won't let me do it. Man, this is driving me nuts i can't i gotta audio call him so everybody end this hold on a second Unbelievable. <laughs> this is great this is like this should we're be having a, a super rough start this here. should be a scene of a movie that's all right it's all right right all right i'm gonna call his number normal call him up. it wouldn't let me merge the calls through uh the facetime oh man audio oh man so yo all right hey I'll tell you now what. I'm hearing you through both my computer and my phone. Oh, you call this with a computer? Yeah. Oh, I hear myself. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Pick it up. Pick it up. Hello. Can you hear me now, Rhino? Hold on. All right. Everybody's on the call. Hey. Hey. Here we go. There you are. All right, so yeah, it, no, it's just uh, I called yeah. you on FaceTime audio, and FaceTime like audio did not allow you to merge the calls. So, you know, I had to just call a couple times to uh, figure it out. We are having a uh, we got a lot going on. We're trying to uh, we're lacking a uh, phone system that'll link into the mixing board and allow us to all communicate on the phone line. So, um, so basically. Uh, you know we need we need a new phone system, but uh, until then we got a little solution here. We can hear. Nice. Yeah, you want to uh, turn down that uh, background, the background uh, cast. Yeah, hang on. All right, brother. Let's have, let's let's get it together, Rhino. There, I just turned my closed my computer, so all right, I can't see you guys at the moment, but we look good. Don't worry. We're doing our best. You like oh, our? Right. So, what do you think of the setup down here, man? We're on day number Dude, twenty-five awesome. of this the, deal. Uh, the in- I watched the intro and that was really cool. Oh yeah, with the uh, yeah, I'm actually kind of proud of that. Um, Very nice job. I had to do that on like a uh, uh, playback animation, but it was like, so I took, I literally just turned the design ten degrees, and then took a new picture of it, and then uh, you know tried to make it a uh, like a spinning record type thing and then was able to add some uh some uh tuning a radio uh um thing so yeah that's kind of why i also can set up uh the time when we're gonna go live and basically if you go to sonic gardens at any um you know i can even set it up when i leave to say we're going live tomorrow at three 
So then if you go to Sonic yeah, Gardens, it did, it did like yeah, a countdown. It was cool. yeah, so all that is like within this new, uh, new linking. It's, it was crazy because we lost our live service. If you remember, like we had a day we missed where we, uh, we did the thing, but we, um, we missed the day as far as, uh, we were having some system, some problem with it going live. Oh, so, yeah. um, and then when I, you know, it took me like 48 hours to figure it out as far as putting in the time, not 48 hours, but over two days. And then, uh, right. and then when I figured it out, it kind of opened up to some new tools that I could use. Like, like for instance, uh, the thumbnail and, you know, uh, the countdown and those things. So that's kind of neat. It's all coming together. Um, yeah, we're just, uh, everybody out there, we're trying to get a thousand subscribers on our channel. Uh, so if anybody can hit subscribe, that would be great. Yeah. But yeah, so, so, uh, tell me what, what have, uh, how you been doing, man? Tell me more. I'm all right. You know, just, uh, going to work. Yeah. You've been working. Yeah. Working out, eating, you know, (laughs) the same, watching too much of the news probably, but you know. Yeah, we heard yeah, you we listening heard. to Aaron Burnett. What's that? It sounded like Aaron Burnett was on the uh, TV. No, it was the Pope. He's doing something. Meeting in Italy. Hopes to reopen in May. Uh, <laughs> well, you know what? Honestly, if you want, we can go over some of this stuff while you're on the phone with us because we haven't uh, tapped into our um, anything you know today yet as far as uh, numbers. Um, yeah, I didn't. But I know uh, that I uh, yesterday was was pretty uh, pretty bad. Not really, you know, across the across the thresh. But Excuse but me. I am seeing like more and more. You know, oh, the numbers aren't going to be as bad as they thought they were. Or you know, yeah, I'm, that's been coming across. And I'm not sure. You know, if that uh, it's kind of like we said from the beginning. If it works out, then they're going to go. Everybody's going to be able to go back to the hoax claim. And if it uh. If it, uh, you know, you want to know something? and that would be from us doing the right thing. And we did drop that number, went back down to 21%. Would you like to know something? All right, tell me. Yeah. What, what? Yeah, what you got? I'll tell, tell you, you I can't hear you, Josh, at all. You want to know something? There you go. I can hear you now very well. Well, I want to tell you something. All right, go ahead. So yesterday when we were going over everything. Yeah. Um, so they quit, uh, trying to just word this right. So when people die now, they haven't, they don't have enough tests. This is in the U S well, they haven't been testing the people die that died to make sure that they died from Corona. So that's not that what they had been doing that, but they, they did in the last few days and there was like 250 of them. Um, but the people that died, they made self quarantine. They just never tested them, and then when and then they died, why they were self quarantine, so they never counted them. So there's a great chance that they were uh, also deaths from the coronavirus. I was reading this on our world meters that we check out. I all did. The time. Uh, the um, in, did it, see that? Um, yeah, but I also saw when uh, like uh, you know that. Uh, uh, I can't remember. I got. I'd have to double check my thing, but I remember. I, I feel like Fauci uh, spoke to this, um, oh, and right. he said it was all all this kind of stuff is distraction. But I mean, number count is not. But like he, I think he was talking about. Um, shit, man. That's kind of why I have to go back because I think it was important. Um, well, it. I mean, it's not. It wasn't. A, I'm just saying the death toll would be up more, or is up more. Right. Oh, so they're not, they weren't counting the people. Yeah. They were before, but they haven't the last three or four days. And the other, the other thing is, is what about, like, are we talking again, when you look at the recovered rate, it's like, where's everybody recovering from? It's like, uh, cause everybody else is, you know what I'm saying? Like, where's the majority of the recovery coming from? And it would be what China again. So we're dealing with, okay. That's probably a good thing to uh, look but the, up. Hey, don't you think that number seems awful low for the amount of people that have been infected? Wait, where? No, because there's still there's there's only a hunt there's only um there's a million there's over a million open cases. There's only been you know there's uh 
400,000 closed cases and this is the world. And so you don't know until two weeks and the more things get overloaded, it's going to be, um, the more deaths that's how it's, it's going to increase. So everybody handling it is getting a different death rate. You know what I'm saying? And we're, we're going off, you know, like the best rates are, um, yeah, we've been talking about this. I'm sorry. I just had to clean up some. Uh, I, no, I did hear. I don't. I and I don't want to start a rumor if you're across the county or anything. But I did. I did hear from what I thought was a pretty reliable source that uh, we did have one COVID death in a vet's home here. Have you heard that? Uh, I did hear that the um, that the yeah that the vet's home uh, was you know definitely had people that were um, uh, that were tested positive and people that were told to quarantine. Yeah. There was a whole wing. Whole wing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I know, uh, inside source and I know, and her mom, uh, goes there. Um, definitely. Yeah. I mean, she that's... was on that wing that got infected. Well, it's just, it's one of those things that's so, it's just so awful because I mean, there's a good chance it could, you know, do some, major devastation in a place like that well here's the here's my here's my take on it is that this is just the beginning part is um the actual uh virus and then the next phase is recovery and i just like a big a big number to me ryan is that in 1982 um we had a day uh like it was the the start of that uh recession of the 80s and uh 700 people signed up for unemployment in one day and it was a critical enough moment in time to where we had you know president ronald reagan come out on tv and give you know a speech that everybody is going to be you know it's going to be tough and all these things you know just a you know a granddad speech of everything's going to be okay kids and uh, he was terrible president that yeah that's i'm i'm not defending that my point is is that that was 700 people and then uh over the last you know 3 weeks there has been 10 million unemployment claims so what i'm saying is is that the 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 next largest time this was an issue was the 80s and i believe that since the 80s you know life has been trying to climb out of uh the same thing and that's what kept all the wages all stagnant. And, uh, you know, luckily the telecom breakthrough and cell phones and and that stuff uh, was able to create a huge amount of, uh, of uh, you know, money to, to bring back that system. But you're talking a 20-year. It's a 20-year plan. So right now, 10 times. And my point is, is that there's nothing you can do to avoid... Um, you know, the things that are going to come next, which is, and now you put a place like Shenango County into that and we are already deprived and coming out of a, uh, you know, 20 year recession of just the area. So now they're going to slap that back on this, on our society again. And, uh, I just feel like, um, you know, I'm not trying to like strike some crazy thing, but there's, there's like positivity can only get you so far. Um, when you're dealing with like a group, I guess, I don't know. What do you think about that? 7 million people in like one day, 10 times. Well, you 4%, know, 4%, 4% of the workforce unheard of, you know, and the, I mean, the longer it goes on, I mean, you can't open the economy until it's safe to do so. So whether that's 60 days or six months, I mean, it's, it is going to be, is what it is. I, I would say the longer, <laughs> the longer it goes on is the, you know, the longer recovery is going to be, you know, that's that, I think those two things go hand in hand, but you can't sacrifice health for, for the other. So. No, I mean, I, by no means, I, I'm just saying that this is, it's kind of an inevitability and, and we're basically looking at a circumstance where, the people are going to need the help of the government, regardless of what anybody wants to, uh, um, you know, even beyond this one little thing. And ideally, oh, yeah. well, ideally well, for the politicians would be to get to get everybody back to work 
But that's if that's not happening, then uh, and it doesn't, you know, I mean, nothing looks good to me. The charts I'm seeing, um, like we talked about yesterday, you're not going to see a decline in deaths until you see a decline in cases. And again, yesterday was right up there with uh, top top days in. Uh, well, um, yeah, and in, in thirty one thousand. What you have to realize yeah. is like, so like New York City right now is at its worst, right? So eventually, New York City is going to decline and it's going to okay, spread to now, every you know, other major in another, in and another then, uh, week or two yeah. weeks it'll be it's it'll be it's worse for us upstate new yorkers you know what i mean right and then then eventually it'll decline again and there's going to be a lot of bad shit happening obviously and um but this is going to do this across the country like yeah, but we see the problem so is it, it's going to peak it's going to go through everywhere but it's not like it happens everywhere all at once it's going to be next month five other states are going through what we're going to go through and but next month five you know five other states are going to go through what they're going through and and i guess what my uh and what my concern with all of that is is that just because all of a sudden new york goes on a decline doesn't mean we're just going to be able to open back up and get out agreed there. agreed yeah 100%. so then so then it's like and then so right now we're seeing the first trials of that in what that Wuhan, which was just another a couple days ago. So now all of a sudden, and we still can't even look at their numbers because the they're way on that, a two hour limit, Angelo. You can only they they can only they get like a hall pass basically two hours. Okay. One family member at a time. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's something weird like that. It's like, and it's I don't know how there's a, they monitor it somehow and it's weird. I don't know how they do it. Well, because they got cameras everywhere over there and tracking them. Yeah, they're wild, man. Yeah, they like yeah, it's like a major like surveillance. Um, I don't know what like, what the term would be, but like a surveillance. I, I don't I don't even know how to describe. It. Like it's like a sort of some kind of like. You're you're basically every move other than outside. Yeah, they they outside. they get you go. They track you on your cell phone, and they're like, ding ding that's ding, your time the is same up. Country that's one kid per family. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. <laughs> it's it's a lot going on. So back to the U.S. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm uh also, one minute. I'm pulling no, up oh, the. Uh, I'm saying I do agree. I do agree with everything you said there. Yeah. And uh, um. So I, just I, I get a, it positivity. So, I mean. Yeah, let me just get a – yeah, because we can sit here and say, oh, everything's going to be great. We're going to get back to it, and everything's going to be great. America, we're great, and we'll make it, and we'll get through this. But we're talking about um, desperation for a lot of people that um, other people don't feel it. So just like the virus, um, certain people are not affected whatsoever. Some people have been working from home all along. Some people have been living a secluded – uh, minimal contact life all along so they're like oh this isn't anything different oh you know blah 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 so here we <laughs> so um you know here we are and it's like everything creeps in differently so like they mentioned is that sure everything's essential but right now uh the whole idea of sales force the whole idea of you know going out and uh jumping in your car and driving around to which is is like your position um, or right down to, you know, oh, what, what, um, what projects are on the board for this quarter? Let's drop them all and wait until see what happens. Therefore, all these people that were regularly working at home, suddenly that's not the same option. And they're saying, hey, look, actually, you're going to need to take your vacation um, and we'll get, you know, we'll see what happens at the end. So just like the virus, it's going to fade into different areas and affect people at different rates and um so everybody's got a positive attitude until they're directly influenced until they're uh directly someone dies or directly um you know they hear the stories of their um you know people they care about uh, healthcare workers being uh subject or um the lack of protection for workers, whether it's Walmart, whether it's McDonald's, whether it's anywhere. So, hey, man, that's my rant for a moment. But again, no, agreed. And it's and it's like, you know, I think you'll you'll I mean, I think you'll see live what you know, exactly what you're talking about over the next couple of weeks, especially on the local level. It's just, it, you know, we're basically 
you know, you, you, New York City. I mean, if you look at any, even any pictures, I mean, it's at like a, it's at like a crawl. It's at like a standstill. I mean, yeah. And um, uh-huh. so, in, in theory, that's how we'll be here in, in in another week or two, as we go through what they, you know. Yeah, and and hard, uh, you know. so uh, just to, people that have been following the show know that we we look daily at the uh, deaths per one million uh, population in the United States. Um, yep. and everywhere. So uh, we've gone up again from I think yesterday it was forty one. Is that correct? I'm I'm not sure. Well, that's I, what it was. In, but that's it's what, uh, that's what it was in Detroit, right, Michigan. Isn't well, now right? USA is up to forty nine per uh, million. Right. Now the biggest losers in this uh, right now, Ryan, and I'm not sure. Like again, if you've been tracking what we're doing and if you can see our screen, you know, as this catches up. But um, I got this world meter up. Spain is uh, hitting a 325 per million uh, population death rate. Um, and so, you know, that's just one of the things I'm looking at to see, you know, that when people say, oh, it's only going to affect 1% of the people. It's only going to affect the amount of people that we can handle. And you know what I'm saying? So it's not just the disease we're looking at. It's everything else. And then, yeah, you know, if you do want to throw in, even things that the president said, like the the desperation that comes about from uh, the situation, um, you know, causing all kinds of things from suicide to robberies to homicide to right. uh, spousal right and domestic domestic abuse, et cetera. Um, yep. Yeah. So and I'm not hey, man, sure. You know, I mean, it definitely goes out to all the kids out there who are already in a domestic, you know, poor domestic situation. You know what I mean? And. Right and now, they're in it twenty four seven. So, exactly, there's a lot of that. Out, there's a lot of that out there, and, and and that's nothing that we can see. There's no, there's no results. No, there's no tracking. That. Yeah, there's, there's no, no results to track. One because obviously we don't know, but two because, um, you know, nobody's nobody's experienced the end of this. Like this is again, like I'm saying, this is the beginning, and the next phase is going to be. Um, you know, a dropped world and everybody trying to get back on their feet and uh, businesses making cuts. And uh, just like the way the, the last uh, recession type thing is it, it forced everybody to stop stocking material. So like the whole idea of like overbuying items to be prepared goes out because that becomes like a bottom line figure to like stock up on, even if it's things you use all the time. You know what I mean? Like, um, um, whatever, you know what I mean? I don't know what exactly, uh, to say as, but it would be like material that might not be sold and you don't want it sitting around on the shelf forever. Right. Yeah. So that declined in the world, which caused anything, a lot. Anything perishable, really. <laughs> well, I'm talking about like even business wise, like if you're investing in your, in your contracting company and you're like, oh, I do roofs, I'm going to stock up on this um you know sealer or whatever it is and then you realize to yourself you can't sit on that product and what you really need to do is just start doing it job by job so so in you know like so then you're saying okay i buy this much each job or i stock up for the stuff that i know is on the books you know but there's no stocking and i guess right which in turn has which in turn has an effect on the economy overall that's not good right because it prices up because you, it's you know you the more you most things anyway the more you buy the less you pay but the less you buy the more you pay right like there's so, the just like when you go to the grocery store you can get a uh, buy one get one free on something but then you go right, home exactly. and all of a sudden you're throwing out the get one free and you say the guy that's buying you know 10 pieces of lumber is going to pay you know 20 bucks a board but a guy who's buying a thousand pieces of lumber is going to pay 15 bucks a board you know? right but if he lets that sit around and doesn't use it and it rots, then he just wasted right. a shit he ton loses of money. money. Then he paid right. 100 right. bucks a board. No, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, that's the, that's the effect it has on everything is that it, now, you know, because that guy had to pay $20 instead of $15 for that board, well, the guy he, the guy he did the work for, the job for, had to pay $1,000 instead of 500 You know what I mean? So Yeah. It's, so let's – um. It has a negative effect all the way around. So uh, just another uh, to keep us on track with our updates here. 
Josh, I'm on the world of media. Yeah. You want to give me some uh, some insight on what, what you're talking about? Yeah, well, I wanted to tell you okay. also that the testing in states, like the next, like uh, New York State has tested 391,000 people. The next highest state has tested 154,000 people. So there's a lot more people in some of these states. Like we were talking about yesterday, the, People get sick and they're, you know what I mean? They're the tough guy and don't go get tested or just, you know what I mean? Right. So there's a lot more people that are actually infected than, than, than this is going to show because people aren't getting tested is what it comes down to. A lot of them, like there's just not, they're trying to open test and the drive through test and all that. But it's clearly, if, you, if your next highest state is 154,000 people, um, We've got a total test of 2,328,000 people have been tested out of fucking 330 million people. Right, um, which is uh, which ends up being 7,035 yeah, really, per million. You, you know what I'm saying? I don't see how you could open the market until tests are available, like... Yeah, is available to everybody. Drive through like testing. Test well, uh, you know federal I mean? federal funding is stopping and they're they're ending some of these uh, these uh, the funding for some of these drive through testings that they were doing. There's one that they were getting uh, 250 tests a day and that they've done over uh, like 6000 tests at one stop. But without that federal funding, it's going to sh- they uh, they they're shutting it down. So like, everybody should be happy. Sorry. No, go ahead. Everyone should have to be tested to go back to work if they open it up this quick. Yeah, everybody. All and then, day long. And then, everybody. And then, like you we said. Pass- that's what I'm saying. They have to be able to produce tests that are that are available to the – I mean, when I say available, I don't mean through your doctor or through the hospital. Like, literally available at Dollar Tree like a pregnancy test. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's the only way, that, in my opinion, that you can really open up economy – without having to pray for you know for a rebirth because oh they're it's going to be a re- if they open it up and don't do something like yeah, that it's going to be over. a second oh for sure Ryan for sure yeah that's what i'm saying but if, you know and it, it, there's a lot of time that would, will have to pass before something like that is available but i mean that, that's the only way i see it like possible because that's the only way to know i mean when you're right. infected you got to stay every you know yeah you Especially if you're home. asymptomatic and don't have any symptoms, but you have it. Yeah. So, so yeah, we'll go through this. Uh, we can go through this right now. Um, the uh, do you want to look at uh, the different? What do you want to look at, Ange? Um, I guess uh, the world or the states. I'm. Uh, I was actually looking at the world, then I was looking at the states. I guess we should stick to the states. Let's look at um. Like, I'm interested in uh, Michigan's getting fucked right now. I think. Well, yeah, and they, and they've only tested well, fifty one thousand people. Right. Out of, and 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 twenty one thousand of them have tested positive, man. Yeah, so that's like one in uh, almost half. One half yeah, the people. Yeah, almost half. Um, they've got over a thousand deaths. Uh, they got twenty thousand active cases. Um, yeah, so basically 2,160 per 1 million is the total cases. Um, so it's, yeah. And remember, remember what I said too, just before Ryan was that, uh, U S as a, as a whole is 49 deaths per 1 million population. But here in New York, we are at 360 60. per 1 million, which is actually higher than um, than the worst country as a whole, which is Spain, I believe. Yeah, yeah it's, it's something else. Man. So, yeah, Spain is running uh, death per million at uh, 325 and 302. So basically, New York is suffering the same as uh, Spain and Italy, and like as a as a country or state, you know, however you want to look at it. But um, you know, again, 
death rate and all those things, we don't know until it's all said and done as far as how many or what the number was. And what we are seeing that we keep pointing out is that of the closed cases in the world, 20, 21% of them as of today have been deaths. Right. Okay. You got that, Ryan? Right. Yeah, so I got that. Okay. You can say for like now at the same time, there's one million one hundred and thirty nine thousand and forty six cases active. And of those cases, four percent of them are serious or critical. So gotcha. well, you see there's two I different that's numbers. 48, Where they're coming up though, Andy, you gotta remember they had you know, we're not the we like, you know, China is almost like they're using their numbers whether they're right or wrong. You know, based, you know what I mean? To like, because they've gone through what we're going through now. Yeah. You know I mean, so that's how they're determined, you know. Except for. As, as well as also comparing it to. Well, no, they've been more comparing it to Spain and Italy. Yeah, um, no, they, we're they not. They believe those numbers are. are that's what are we're going to see. That's, we're going to see the carnage of Spain and Italy. We're not going to see the, we're not going to see the, uh, we're not South Korea or, and we're not going to be like i said china is one of those things where i from the beginning we've been talking about it almost since the beginning that we don't we haven't trusted the numbers uh and then you know josh would keep pointing out look they're locked down they're not even allowed to go out but we just still are like you know what do we know what what don't we know so we're just the way they report the way they test people like they test people they have to test them like three times in order to confirm them as a case and uh yeah. Yeah, they weren't even counting the asymptomatic people for a while, man, as a case. Right. So we have so, nothing to look at except for Italy, Spain. Well, shit. What is it? Is it 148 countries it's in right now? No, it's over 200. No, it's over 200 or 198 was the last. I'm sorry, I'm looking at it. 198 yeah. was the last number I knew. It's or, 209 so, countries and territories are, are are affected. How many? How many are there total? Cases? You know, anybody? No countries. Oh, I don't. I'm not sure about that. I'm but I mean, what, yeah, I mean, this is yeah. like certain ones. This is just the beginning. And you and they've already warned us that no matter who they are, whether it's uh, Iran or China or Russia or North Korea, you know, these these authoritarian regimes are not going to um, they're not going to they're not going to give you the same. You know, they're, they want to make themselves look good. So I don't know. Yeah, like Russia. Yeah, like look at Russia's had look over at North a, Korea. Russia's had over a million tests, and even though that's uh, only what is it per million was uh, six thousand eight hundred and eighty-five. Says there's one hundred ninety-five countries in the world. Right, and then you got territories, though. You know what I mean? Oh, right, territories. Um, so basically, like uh. Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic, stuff like that, right? Those are territories, right? Yeah. Don't you agree? I think so. I'm kind of looking, I'm trying to look that up right because now. Because Puerto later. Rico is not a country. We, you know what I mean? It's one of our territories, right? American Samoa. Um, all kinds of them. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. That's what I'm saying. Um, like, so, you know, along with these... 20 or 30... So as a, uh, um, yeah, so as we go down, we don't have anything to go by. And, and my belief is that the more lax, the more lax, which makes sense, you are about this deal, the more people are going to uh, suffer. And like I said, it's, it's uh, when you go places, it hasn't even set in yet. You know, I mean, we're just starting to get into the fact that that we might have a new fashion attire for the next, uh, um, you know, six months or year or who knows, man, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 18 months, six, you know, 12 to 18 months before there's a, a vaccine. I think that's, I'll like, be, on, I'll be honest with you on a personal level. I might never go back to Utica again. <laughs> <laughs> You mean right, like like talking, like you were just saying that you're working, but now you're like, maybe I'm not. Yeah, I'm just like. You got to evaluate it. It's like I said, it's, it's um, if we can't, and yeah, and obviously <laughs> the ridiculous part about this is that, you know, you have to, uh, you have to uh, weigh it out, 
you know, whether or not all of a sudden your choice to protect yourself is going to end up, um, uh, you know, all of a sudden six months down the road, you, you can't find work, you know, and all of a sudden it's like, well, you should have taken that job that almost killed you. Whatever. I don't get it, you know? Yeah, it's... I mean, you got to survive, but that, again, that's why I'm saying there needs to be some government relief here. Oh, Christ. I mean, anymore <clears throat> now, going, going to Walmart, you feel like you're walking into a Petri dish. And... Oh, you, and you are. You straight up are because you see how nobody is doing anything to protect themselves or anybody else. They're just like, there's groups of, you know, three, four people hanging around each other, uh, hugging on each other. I just, it's it's a weird thing to me. And I'm just like, but I feel like I'm a... Like, I feel like I'm some, like, oh, look at this smarty pants walking around with their mask on. Wow, you're real smart. And it's like, and, you know, it's a kind of a weird feeling because one side of me is like, I should be saying, you know, guys, you should all be protecting yourselves. But then it's like a, all of a sudden it's a political thing to, like, care about your fellow, uh, like, people or something, you know. Oh, you, yeah, it, you believe that weird. shit, you know, and then it's like, oh, okay. So you don't believe that shit? I really, this is a moment where I just really wish that above anything that I've ever disliked the president for, I just wish that he would have a solid um, answer for everybody instead of playing both sides like he always does, you know? I right. Wish he would just say, this is a serious deal. If you think it's a hoax, if you think this, then you're an idiot, period. Oh, he and, can't do that. Yeah, because then, uh, you know. Well, if he was like his buddy Kim, Kim, whatever he is over there, fucking North Korea, they they have no cases, man. They, <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, it really, you make a good and point the, there because it really should come, if it, you know, if it is like this, it should just come from from the top down and every organization from everywhere. Go the fuck home and be home and stay home and that's it. You know. And instead, and, it's like well, you know, choice. You well, you don't have to go to work, but we really, uh, you know, need your help, and we'll remember this if you say no. You know, it's bullshit. Right. What have you guys been doing to stay busy, man? Other than you know, the podcast. You know, I'm uh, I'm with uh, I'm with Gabe, man, and he's kind of a handful. So I try to uh, do my best to uh. You know, keep them fed and, uh, Literally you know, I'm doing, doing some different projects around the house. Um, I put in a new floor in my kitchen. I already had all the material, so I didn't have to make one trip. It was just a matter of, uh, you know, me saying, oh, I'll do that someday. So I'm kind of in that boat, you know, with a few things. I think if I go get a few pieces of uh, backer board, I could do some awesome tiling stuff with, um, again, I have all the material except for some backer board. I could redo a bathroom. So that's oh, yeah. kind of like, you know, something uh, that I, you know, I trying to do. And like I said, housework, feeding my son, trying to, uh, for me, I'm, I was always, uh, you know, I, I'd wait, I'd waste a lot of food with the option of being able to eat out whenever I want. So I would uh, buy, you know, I'd have the idea that I buy groceries and save some money. But then all of a sudden, uh, I'd be saying, "Oh, I'm just gonna go get something to eat," and then I'll and now, because I just don't want to make unnecessary trips whatsoever, regardless of how sick. I hate or, it. Yeah, I hate you know, it. like um, that I just really am like planning it out. I shop one time. I, I've I've shopped twice since this whole thing, and I really am like buy everything I can, and then uh, um, you know, cook everything. So I'm like not wasting any 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 food and I've really just eliminated eating out. Um, although, you know, like I, like I said, I, I, uh, I do, I do feel for all the, the businesses and everything. I just feel like it's a difficult, um, you know, choice to choice to make, but it just seems like, um, you know, just doing my part to stop the, the spread, man. I mean, shit, who would have ever thought that being a, a true American would just require you to sit on the couch and relax. Yeah. Take some, you know, that's kind of part of it. It's my thing is I'm I'm trying to uh you know, it's like the ultimate just kind of sit still. The people that can't sit still are going to be the people that have like the hardest time with this. And I guess what I mean is like um you know, ambition or I don't know. Hey, wait it out. We're waiting it out. 
I have a feeling that the number one prescribed drug in 2020 is going to be Xanax. Huh. <laughs> you smoke some weed. <laughs> there you go. That'll be number one for sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Ryan, we're going to let you go, man. You no, know, it's funny not to like get ahead <laughs> of my, cause I hate when I get, when you start thinking about politics, you know, as we've discussed, but yeah, let's get a, let's what, get ahead of yourself. When, let, let's just say when this is all over, you know, when it's, whether it's again, it's a year, six months, four months, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But I, I would be willing to bet that one of the things that will help drive and save the economy would be, would be the legalization. Oh, I already for, said for, it. For it definitely for New be. York right now. And I, I, I told uh, Ange, I'm, I've always been a kind of like never um, said, oh, we should legalize marijuana and stuff. But we definitely like that. That would help us like, uh, I mean, immensely, dude. Like uh, when they when they brought back uh, alcohol out of prohibition, um, because they because because they were so fucking the, the Great Depression back then, they were so broke, and when they brought that back, that helped so much the sale of alcohol and everything. Uh, weed would do that right now, man. Well, maybe not right now because we're still locked down, but when we come out of the lockdown, right? That's what I'm saying. Like it, it really could be something that could you know, save New York, so to speak, if you're looking for a. And it was on the table, but they had to shelve it because they needed to do all this other stuff with emergency money because this happened. Right. That's what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, the timing for it, for an economy push would be, you know, more needed than ever. No doubt. No doubt. I, I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like what would make the most money for New York, like in the next. That would help them tremendously. I personally believe that all drugs across the board should be legal. Right. Everything yeah. from heroin sure. to crystal meth. Uh, right. To, um, you know. And I also have another one that I I feel like uh, the trillion dollar pharmaceutical industry. Um, you know that you give probably a majority of the the credit to their wealth is from things like viagra adderall um i mean i don't know the the other things vicodin those uh you know all well, those things back on all that on the viking and, and shit. right well but my i guess my point is is that uh i feel like uh i feel oh, like gosh. that the pharmaceutical industry is just modeled after the king himself pablo escobar and realized this guy was so rich and so uh dominant of all the american money that somehow they figured out a way to uh legalize it and run it through the insurance system which is another huge uh you know reason why i distrust the whole medical uh setup as far as uh insurance and you know kickbacks and these types of things so Met, you know, that's why I was always Medicare for all. Made sense. Right. Made sense. But, you know, then you got corruption in the government. So, I don't know, man. Go libertarian, but then you got no representation. So, you know. Right. I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, at the very least, Tell us. most Americans, their faith in political in politics has to be shaken somewhat, no matter what you believe after this whole thing is over. Well, you know, what's funny is that I've always, I'm always been distrustful. So I'm not, and I don't, I'm not like a huge fan of Nancy Pelosi or uh, governor Cuomo or, you know, anybody like I take, it's like a grain of salt. I was thinking about this, that the first time I ever looked at two candidates and like judge them was, uh, Al Gore and George Bush. So before that, that was that was one of the closest races ever. Yeah, it? and I, and you know what? My personal like take on it at that time in my life was that they were, um, they were just the same. It was like one had a blue tie and one had a red tie. Now, like as I'm like older, I understand they're not the same, but I understand they were the same as far as like crooked or, um, you know, part of establishment politics so yeah so um 
you know, then moving on and it's like, I never really, you know, I, I, I knew I didn't care for Bush because, um, I just am very anti, uh, since I was very young, the whole, uh, whole concept of war and like, you know, the ideal of uh, world peace. So anybody that like jumps into war or, uh, justifies it, you know, that was a big, big portion of my life too. So that's what kind of leaned me towards, um, more democratic or, uh, more, uh, yeah. Democrat policies was just seemed like a more compassionate route. But then you start to see a lot of uh, corruption and, and, you know, uh, mainstream things like the way the media is, uh, you know, but my, my whole thing is mainstream media is both sides. It's like, how can someone attack mainstream media and then watch Fox? Because Fox is mainstream media. And I would actually, um, you know, based on the fact that they, they gloat about their ratings uh tells you me watch that, fox right m- i don't watch fox no um, you don't either Ange? i only i only watch fox i just watch um, yeah i just watch, I watch clips. fox for nfl football that's it. right yeah no i just watch typically uh clips like i can't sit through tucker carlson or hannity or rachel maddow on msnbc or you know but every yeah. once in a while you know every once in a while you know i can like I said about it's like with the Rachel thing, it's like she just has a certain character about her that is aggressive. Idiot. I don't think she's an idiot. I think she's actually well, I mean, extremely she smart, but she's her, super her smart. Her ideals are idiots. Um, I just think the way that, you know, I think some people get into a snarky thing and then she start. it's it's a <laughs> condescension. It's a condescending attitude that kind of gets me. But right. I do think she's smart. I think that. Um, and I don't think she's necessarily doing it on purpose. I think she's a, a person that's trying to be likable when it's, uh, you know, it's hard to be likable. Yeah. I don't know. And then you got Hannity yeah. that is just like, you know, I'm a sports guy. I like to w- lift weights and uh, I, I do stupid it voice because he's not doesn't have that accent. But he's like, I throw a football. And like, these are the things that make him like a strong, uh, you know, whatever like a strong patriot, like they idealize him as a, a strong patriot when it's like he's he's like the – he's snarky too, same thing. He's arrogant and, and thinks he's, uh, you know, better than everybody. I don't know, whatever. Well, going back to your original question about the, what's the difference of the mainstream media, I think like the argument that I see – that all of them do against each other, that how they pit themselves against each other is the selective, and this is on both sides, the selective broadcasting of various topics or what people have said about various topics. Like, you know, uh, somebody on Trump's side would say, well, they wanted to yell at me for this, but forgot to mention the legendary thing that I just did. Right. And, you know, the other side it would, would do the exact same, like glorify, you know, say, well, they didn't say that Bernie Sanders, what a wonderful thing he did, but they said that he's a communist, you know, or something like that. It's like, I didn't know select- he did anything wonderful. Yeah. I'm just saying, but I'm just using that. Him as it doesn't have to yeah. be that person. And, um, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. And, it, and, and so my, the thing I look at is, uh, another thing is that you got, you got people that are the first to like accuse, like you'll see the same person that defends, um, you know, defends Trump, let's say, put out an article accusing like Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer of, uh, you know, taking a, you know, like something so ridiculous, like, like, uh, the pedophile one that I just recently saw where, oh, it's all going to break. And they were saying in the beginning of the COVID virus that this is what it's really about. And Tom Hanks is in, uh, hiding somewhere, oh, yeah. you know, that one where it just like, when I saw Tom Hanks, it was like, really? Oh, wow. And then you're like, oh, but Bill Cosby. So anybody could be a total fucking, uh, you know, uh, right. this thing. So, um, You know, it's like you start to like it's like that that simple little reverse um, shadow of a doubt, you know, like the whole what you like the reverse idea of innocent until proven guilty is like, oh, now you're guilty until you're proven innocent. So now all of a sudden this guy's got to go prove that he doesn't uh, pedophile children and that he wasn't 
part of something. Same thing with Justin Trudeau. You know, he was in right. on it, and that's why he was isolated. And I just like, you know, and and you know, it's just one of those things where the same people that are, you know, it's the same people, in my opinion, that are saying that, you know, that that fake media are sharing these stories daily. So it's like, how can you even say that about anybody if you don't uh, check your own shit, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. So then it's like, okay, fine. Just you do it, you know, share stupid shit all you want, but don't call other people out for sharing stupid shit, I guess. Right. There you go. Right. It's actually, it's like what I'm saying. It's a battle of who, who's saying the, the more stupid shit, right? You know? Right. <laughs> Well, yeah. they're all a bunch of people I wouldn't want to hang out with. I know them. That's a fact. Yeah. And that goes for politicians as well as the media. You know, you ever see the media? Yeah. Um, oh, man. Yeah. Like, you just see I those mean, moments. You ever been, a, you've ever, you ever seen them like, you ever been uh, um, approached by us. the media? That's a weird yeah. thing. Like, you think. Uh, hey, you know who you're talking to? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, wow. I ever been, do you, you fucking think? I mean, <laughs> yes, it's just I like actually, I, I have been approached by the media. <laughs> like, uh, okay, here's another one. Like, you can find anybody. Um, you could like, like, we could make a whole show, and there's, there, I've seen it on both sides. Let you know, both uh, TV programs where they'll send like a field reporter out to say a Trump rally, and then they'll be like, right. look at all, look how stupid Trump people are. And but you could also well, go to nice. right. You could also then the, then the other side will go to like a uh, you know a Bernie rally, and they'll say, "Look how stupid Bernie people are." But the reality that's is, not- you can go around and you can interview you know fifty people or something or twenty people, and yeah, right. you're bound to get like five interviews of somebody that's completely you know st- like stupid. Like they do that with uh, you go out in the uh, the streets of a big city. You know, I mean, you used to when things were like that. And you could approach yeah, you people and ask them the simplest questions, like who, um, um, you know, who's the vice president of the United States? And right. you'd be blown away to find out how many people don't get it. They don't know. They're like, uh, they it, don't care. You know, right? And they're looking at their friend and they're going, is it this person? And then they're like, the friend's like, no, I think it's uh, and they name a foreign person or like an actor right. or they're completely clueless. So that's like the cash cab. <laughs> so. So anything, you know, and you know, and not to get off topic, but you know what it reminds me of, which was like a really cool thing when we were in school. I don't know if you, with Callahan's class, that oh comedy. Boy. Yeah, man, I always, I always go class. back to that class. I, uh, I always love that. Him and Mr. Uh, Liparulo. Liparulo. We had the, we had the. Uh, it was. I, I think, think was I'm friends with uh, Steve on Facebook. Maybe he I checked see. this out. But they would, they, uh, what they would do, sometimes is see. If you like, you know, if who did the assigned readings or whatever, you know, from the for the history lesson coming up. So he would they would get into their lesson the next day after you're supposed to have done your readings and just start dictating facts that were not facts that were completely fake. Like I always remember them saying Dung Ixipong was the empress of China. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, there's never been an empress of China and everybody's writing it down and going along. <laughs> <laughs> that it, was know? a uh you know what's so funny nobody, is is how i can all of a sudden picture i picture us in that class together there was only one class it was like it didn't even last any years after that it was a it was an english and history class put into one and had two teachers do you remember that that's the one yeah that's the one and there was like that, it was yeah, our it was, it was our was year and, uh, yeah that was so funny man that 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 was the best class of all time best class of all time we learned about how to use one roll or one sheet of uh toilet paper to wipe yeah. with remember that that was classic. yeah it was the uh the best the best present group presentation i think i'd ever ever put together help put together to this day yeah man that's awesome that was a fun that was fun yes sir Huh. I even rem- I even remember like during our presentation, we were part of it was on like the bombing of Pearl Harbor or whatever, and we were like, "This is actual footage from you know from nineteen whatever you know <laughs> from yeah." And it just showed like a bunch of people running and getting forty one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Back in the day. All right. Hey, Ryan, we're going to let you go on this. All right, brother. Um, uh oh. All right, and man. We'll uh, open up the line to see if we see if we can get any other callers in here. Uh, we don't want to talk to anybody. But man, else thank now. you, thank you so much for calling. We've been, uh, I've been wondering what you're up to. Hadn't heard from you. And I am. Yeah, you guys too, man. I am still looking to uh, get that Zoom together. Like, if we all download cool. that, I've already used it as Zoom. a party as a party line. And if I can pull it up on my MacBook, um, then we could really start doing uh, Sonic's Corner again. I know there's news out there. Uh, you know, obviously with, um, uh, There's this island, up. Dana's, Dana's getting an island. So we'll see. I know. I think it's, it's so we'll like, see. This, it's yeah. I mean, these guys really want to fight bad, I guess, man, because shit they bought an island, dude. But Khabib's and not they, fighting. They're, they're building a UFC like, yeah, arena it's, on the he island. He knows, he knows that he'll make a fortune right now. But the, the flip side is Dana White is getting killed right now. And that just yeah. like anybody else, it's like how what is he doing to uh, secure money? And there's no buzz, there's no like like everything dropped. So, but at the same time, it hasn't because there is still that buzz. So I'm thinking if we if we want to set it up and start doing it once a week again, it's so start. I, I have I, um, I have a Sonic's corner prediction. Just since you're bringing this up, before you let me go. All right. Okay. All right. So, it just it's a coupling on what you said of you know. If Dana White is able to pull off this fight in, you know, on this island, you know, the Ferguson Khabib fight, if that fight is able to go it's, on, it's I not Khabib. And uh, it's Matt, it's Matt. Yeah, it's, it? it's, no, no, it's, uh, no, it's, I'm sorry, Gaethje. Gaethje, Gaethje yeah, sorry. Gaethje it's, it's and, uh, like and, uh, and Tony Ferguson. But listen, he plans on doing other fights every weekend. Like, he's going to have. For in the United so States. Wait, let, so wait, so you were just, that's what you were just saying, right, Ryan? What'd you just so say? Let, let, my, my prediction is that, well, before, okay, before I give him my prediction, if, if this goes sour and a bunch of fighters get infected and a couple of them die. Game over. He, right. that could, this could, it could ruin his career. Right. Yeah, however, but he's got too much money in tests. I, I get, get tests. So, However, however, I, I, I hope that doesn't happen. I want to watch fights. It would be great to be able to watch fights. So I'm, I'm, you know, and I'm an advocate for it if, if it can be safe for all involved. I agree. However, what my point or my prediction is that if, if, if the brilliance of this, if he's able to pull this off, if not by the first pay per view, by the second one, I believe that it will pass and break all records, including the McGregor and Mayweather watches number of watches and purchases okay i like that, that. i like your I prediction that i like it i think I it's possible it, for sure it will surpass it multiple times i believe each one will get that goes on that they do will get bigger and bigger and they'll break a record each time making an unprecedented amount of money i think he's got to drop the price and i think they will oh, he that. will drop the price for single uh viewer thing He's got to because See, you he's used got to, to because groups of people can't get together and chip in. You can't watch it at the bars. There you know used I mean? to be um, before ESPN bought them there. You used to be able to buy UFC fights on your phone, and it was like ten bucks to watch the thing oh. instead of instead. But once they took over, it was all linked through that same well, what, what uh, pay per view is, system. I think you, you have the possibility of seeing a UFC app like espn plus which is where you buy it you know and you get the first pay-per-view for you know for like half price but you agree for the five bucks a month or whatever it is eight bucks a month for the year and then you can buy each fight for 50 bucks you know but like so right but I now that, now since there's no might, fights weekly records with they might set records and surpass like what disney has done but and here, netflix has done and strictly due to this situation my my point with that is that we're we're kind of feeling a little bit ripped off in that i mean even though they gave us this promotional deal that said you know buy this buy this fight for this much money throw in an extra 20 bucks and we'll give you a year's worth of espn plus two whatever um, right that like now we're getting screwed because we're not watching any of those fights that we signed up for on our monthly subscription so even though i'm paid up till you know, March of whatever, like next year for this ES, I'm not getting anything. Yeah. You out still, of it. you still have to pay the 50 bucks for every fight, you know, but which everybody else will. Too, so that's kind of what, well, right. Except for the first one, 
that's why I'm saying by the time the second or the third, if this thing keeps going on and they, they keep doing these pay-per-views with the big, with big names, I mean, the subscribers. I just want to know where all the money is going to come from though. Nobody's, well, you'd be in, nobody's you'd fucking be working. Well, it's going to yeah. decrease. Like I said, that, that what we were talking about earlier, there's going to be an afterflow and, and we'll see. Like I said, I think that I honestly think that everyone from small to big, whether it's a corporation, whether it's somebody with a lot of money, everyone is nervous right now. Everyone is on the borderline of that panic mode or anxiety, you know, this this thing. It's not just, just think about just think about it for, from the standpoint of it being the only live sport in the world going on. That's it. That, that, I mean, the only lot that's available to people in probably 150 countries, the only live sporting event in the world would be these UFC pay-per-views. And that's why he's doing it. it yeah. But he's I mean, got to drop the price. Yeah, sure. He'll drop the price. But the idea of dropping the price is to get the subscribers. So they, you know, sure. They got their event. They're still going to buy the other events, but they're always paying five bucks a month. It's just going on their credit card for, forever right you know what i mean so and that's uh hundreds of millions of subscribers he is all paying a, five bucks a month plus buying 50 dollars pay-per-views it could be i'm telling you it could be the yeah i agree with you the five dollars a month but the 50 dollars pay-per-views start to add up after a while and that's I mean, people like us get together and ship in yeah but can't do that who, locked who, up. see they don't care if they you know they're going to make most of their money off of the first five while people still have money and then after that, they're just paying the five dollars a month. Oh right, then they're still getting the five. I I understand yeah. what you're saying. They'll sell the first couple because there's still money. But once the right. money goes away, and then his idea would be like, "Fuck it, I made my last my last billion, and I'll throw it in my bank account." And then what they do is drop down. the price again. Then they'll drop the price again for newer for more newer subscribers. It'll just be, I mean, I'm telling you. I, billions and billions of dollars can they do they stand to make if this if they yeah. market this if they market it right and pull well it let's uh let's definitely um they're gonna fight every week man he says and by the way god damn it what is with john jones getting in trouble again dumbass <laughs> <laughs> all so right well, let's, and, let's and, talk with the guys and we'll definitely get on those topics a little bit more too we right. bring back sonic's that's corner my prediction ufc stands to make hundreds of billions of dollars all right, we'll keep our eye on it. <laughs> but we'll anyway, start. We'll start peace tracking guys. it. Later, yep. peace, Ryan. Later. Good to hear from you, brother. You too. Love you guys. Love you too. Love you. Thanks for having us. And Mr. Uwa's back. Yo, yo. There you go. Can you hear me? Yep. Hey, this thing on? Yep. Can you hear me? I can. All right, you're back. It's tough when you're, uh, yeah. you know, it's a, you know, but it, it worked, man. It worked, worked enough. Your elbow's probably a little sore. I mean, you need to get the little. I did a lot of listening. You got long-winded. Oh. <laughs> hey, we got another phone call coming yeah. in. Fucking don't answer it. Um, seriously. Uh, I think it's a uh, douche. It's gonna be my son. Oh, good. I like your son. He's a good kid. You're live on the Mang and Neat show. From Los Angeles, California. Here. Yeah, you sound hey, like it. What are you happening? surfing? <laughs> I was just wondering um, what you guys' stances on um, going over to people's houses and associating with people at friends' houses. Um, no, well, that's it? that's a huge no-no, man. Yeah. It's uh, it's you got to reduce. It's, it's actually the worst situation in a way because you're dealing with uh carriers that are most most surely not going to be um showing symptoms in the young people but then those people will easily be able to transfer to their uh um adult just parents and uh you know so i really just suggest facetiming and, uh that you facetime you keep up to date you try to try to get into some other ways to uh you know, keep in touch. And I understand, man, it's a find a girlfriend it's a tough situation, but it really um or a partner. Yeah. Anything, whatever you're into. So, I haven't been keeping up with the show too much, so I don't know what you guys um Unbelievable. You guys think about um uh what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something about uh uh <laughs> so 
what do you think, how long do you guys think it's going to be until we can associate with people again? Oh, they're going to prematurely tell them. They're going to prematurely. They're uh, probably going to open back up um, prematurely. May, May and then something. It's all going to happen again around May time. So I would definitely say that uh, that the schools are not going to be opening back up this sem- this um, this year calendar year this calendar year, and that school is just going to restart in the fall. Um, I believe and Pennsylvania as as, did that, Ange. They they said you're yeah. done for this calendar year. Yeah, they didn't. Really? I think. Yep. So a lot of places. My senior year of high school. Then. Yeah, that's. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> sorry to hear. Oh that. wait, you're in California, right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, dude, they don't think that they're gonna be. Um, one, it's one forty six right now. They do one more time was. Oh, that's not California time, is it? Oh yeah, one forty six. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, kinda. Actually, are they? I be- think he can hear you now. Oh, can he? No, he can't hear me. Uh, I can hear you. Oh yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I just turned you up on the speaker in here. Oh. So, um, yeah, they're talking about in California about, like, they're, they don't think, like, even even if things, uh, sports got back together, I know this has nothing to do with a lot, but, like, if sports got back together, they don't even think they'd be having games in the state of California until after Thanksgiving. California plans on keeping it locked. So, uh. This is not going to be a football season this year, huh? There might not be, man. It's right. going to be questionable. What team are you rooting for, buddy? Uh, definitely the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Cool. Cool. Um, All right. Have you ever been to Kansas City? I've been wagon. I've liked the Chiefs for a while. Um, just saying. Not because they won the Super Bowl or anything. Right, oh, of course. Not. Yeah, because they hadn't won one in forever. <laughs> but yeah, I like Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, he's good. All right, he's good. Well, uh, so how how are you holding up? So you're missing your friends, and uh, you're you're pretty bored, huh? Is that what's going on? Yeah. Would you like us to come up with some stuff for you to do? I know. <laughs> I, see, I personally, I have a, uh, I have a son is at home right now and uh like when i left today did you, you give know, him chores he's been, he's been really like living a very uh lax life right now oh he's been pretty much ghosting his teachers and you know thinking that uh everything was going to be real smooth and uh so i'm just trying to like get him into wanting to better his uh you know situation and not be so anxious by uh you know, doing the things he needs to do. So, yeah, I gave him a few chores. I gave him a little list. It was uh, three things. To switch the laundry from the washer to the dryer. Um, to sure. put away the dishes. <laughs> and to uh, vacuum one rug in the main living room. Ooh, where, the where, old run one uh, rug. Where he spends, mo- where he spends most of his... So what do you think? Do do uh do your parents give you chores to do? Do you get chores? My aren't usually around. Oh. Oh no. Oh. You're on your own. They do you live on Skid Row? They're very. They're very. No. <laughs> no. No. They're not. Um. Uh. No. Careful. They're very busy. Very busy people. All right. I don't usually see. My uh, father. He, Is it why do you sleep all day while he's awake, and then when when you get up, he's gone? Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe you get up earlier, sir. Uh, <laughs> wake up at uh. Well, soon you'll be able to mow the lawn. Dang. And rake some leaves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, that's depressing. Yeah, well, life's not all fucking rainbows and unicorns, bud. <laughs> Man, it was. Well, why don't you draw some stuff and? Oh we'll, yeah, we'll uh, build well, some shit. You know shit. what? Well, we got. Uh, we'll build some stuff. Son. Yo, Gabe. Well, you got a. Uh, oh wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't even know the guy's name. You're calling him your son's name. You don't even know his Do name. Do you want to? Uh, you want to talk about uh, Josh and the shirts that he's doing and? Um, 
Uh-oh. and how you want to do it. He doesn't a, like uh, he doesn't like my shirt. And if you're interested in uh in uh designing a uh, sweatshirt or a uh, your own personal face mask, that would be kind of cool too. Oh, we're gonna we were thinking of getting into face masks. Yeah, Josh see, is already doing it. I'm kind of jumping in, on bandwagon. If you're in uh, high school still, you could you could. You know what your friends like and stuff like that. We can market it, and then you can sell them to your friends. And you can. And, and their parents. Uh, dude, even their parents? Yeah. That's crazy. Seriously. Um, You're going to. So, th- so you, you can email me about that. All right, sir. Hey, uh. I, no, what's your email? You uh, hey, FaceMax. I don't know mine off the top of my head. Face masks are going to be the new norm, even if they let us back out in the society. Right. And that'll last for a good six to a year. Yeah. Six months to a year, I'd say. Thank you so much uh, for calling us, man. We like it. Can't believe we're living through this pandemic right now. It's crazy. It is crazy, and it's just getting started. So hang in there, kid. And you're young, so it's a good thing. You'll be able to turn the country around. That's right. You might be our next All president right. in 2035. That'd be cool. Sounds actually. good. Well, it would that be cool. Tour thing reminded me about something I had to do. So I'm going to have to let you guys go. I'm going to go. All right, bud. All right. All right. Take care. All right. Mangan Neats Show. Mangan Neats. Sonic Garden Radio. Right. Live. All right. You know, Very cut. good. Oh, yeah. Oh man! Oh boy! Oh boy! He says. Yeah. So um. So um. So um. Right down. If I'm gonna you give can. you guys a tune. I'm gonna give you a full, full blown out uh oh, boy. Or deal, man. I'm gonna give you a video too because I a video. I reassigned my setup here, so now my video and my uh, the audio that I play is coming off of the uh, same computer. Therefore. <laughs> <laughs> there you yeah. go the whistler Fuck it, eh? well, whistle whistler yeah you you were silent for a minute i didn't want to <laughs> it's not good to have radio silence they tell me so okay so, so here uh, we come with uh yo let me give you guys uh <clears throat> eddie murphy's red light Done by Shaka, live here, Sonic Gardens Radio. Shaka. Hope you guys enjoy. Um, what? Well, you got a question? That's right. You got a question?
Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Sound. No, sir. <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? Sitting out here. Sitting out here. Sitting in here, man. Cool. Doing my thing. I actually just brewed up a cup of coffee. Oh I like boy. to drink coffee myself. I'm a big coffee fan. Yeah, I got. I brought. I brewed up some this morning. Um. Yeah, man. That's Another about it. To go. So cup. that was uh. That was uh. Shaka. Performing Red Light by Eddie Murphy, man. If you uh, never heard that one before, if you look up uh, Eddie Murphy and uh, he's got a lot of good tunes from that era, and man, that guy is phenomenal, phenomenal singer, uh, musician, songwriter. Right. He's like got it going on. Yeah, he does. But we all knew that anyway. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, man, that was the last time we played. That was on uh, March fifteenth, right before. Uh, we were all told to uh, quarantine and stay away from each other, and we would have a, we would always have a pretty decent like little gathering on Wednesdays and Sundays where people would show up. So we'd definitely be hitting that mark of, uh, of uh, too much, too much contact with other humans, I guess. Oh, yeah. So we've uh, put a pause on it, and I'm, you know, just like everything, we're just waiting for uh, some kind of uh, signal or ability to uh, get back together, man. Shaka, excited man! Once we do, we're gonna have some uh, crazy stuff to uh, broadcast live, add to this station, and uh, keep this whole thing going. Having a great time, man. You are? Yeah, Where? I'm enjoying myself. Just oh, doing this, yeah, yeah, doing yeah. this uh, daily thing with you, Mister. Oh yeah, you know the main desk the main desk out here the main desk with the uh our main anchor down here down here manganese show. main anchor's been quiet today a little bit We've been, yeah you were long-winded i've been a little had a lot of going i had a lot going on you got all excited when some dude called you up fucking we were <laughs> we uh, i was out here i felt left out again yeah i just was quiet you guys were just every time someone no one even took a breath we, it was just like pass, 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 pass. Yeah. I like it, though. It was good. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, man. Gave me time to catch my breath. There you go. So what do you want? What do you got? What's your uh, latest I know, every, uh, Everything info? I had, I forgot about. But uh, I'm sure you got some new stuff to talk about. Um, I don't know. Uh, you want to get us back to uh, our... Uh, our uh, up back to the great <laughs> what we all got look forward to yeah i mean move in on shenango county see if anything's uh changed not much Ange. i was looking at that a little bit ago and uh i mean they're not really i don't get it well i do get it but well we know how many it seems tests. like they'd have tests up here and stuff you know what i mean yeah it seems like it we've got they've tested 286 people in our county Still 55 people have tested positive. So basically that's 19%, Ange. So 19% of the people tested are positive. Yes. 55. Are you me- positive? That I'm I'm positive of what I have read. I'm <laughs> I'm not uh covid positive. Right, that I know of. How would you know? Once you get a test. Right. That's Very good the point. point. So dropping down here into our uh, Shenango, we are at 55 now. Yeah. It's a, it's which a, means... Uh, just said that. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah I'm sorry. I was searching. I was like, uh, you're not trying to do a little... On a dog, what? What do they got? Our, uh, ooh, a little bit close there. Man, they've tested 5,312 people. Up in Syracuse? On a dog, yeah. Three hundred means uh, three hundred fifty-eight people tested positive, six point seven percent. And was that like a? Uh, I guess you might not know, but I was thinking. I'm wondering if that was some kind of a drive-through version or what. Like, seems like if you have the lower there. numbers, it's because they're not just testing you if you're sick. They're testing right. just mass testing, which is what we need to do. Right. Right. I concur. 
Um, Ryan Warner, he actually uh, gave us a comment on here a little while ago just to let us know a big problem with testing employees because we had mentioned uh, employee testing. Oh, boy. Let is if they are not practicing their strict quarantine, then uh, they can, you know, obviously become infected. But again, like we're saying, that's a daily. So that's like you go to work, you get your fever checked. But again, they could be getting it if they're not, uh, you know. Yeah, but listen, they have those 15-minute tests. You just show up early, you get tested. If you pass it, you go into work. If not, you go home, get quarantined, get fired. I don't know. If you're an idiot and you get tested every day and and uh, you're going to see people, then you should get fired. <laughs> right? Straight well, you up. Don't, I, yeah. <laughs> Straight up. If you're, if you're going to work and you test and you're, and you're good to go, and you pass, and then you're still going home, and you're going to hang out with people that don't work with you, that have a chance to infect you, or you infect them, and then you go back to work and you test positive, then you should be fired. Then you're the problem. That is for then sure. you're the problem. For sure. Look for a new job. Sit home for 14 days first. See, it's a, I agree with you, but I feel like you're being a little harsh when you I'm say, not. get another job. What? But you're right. Think about it. <laughs> Think about it. What that's what the world's come to, man. That's what the world's come to. Kill our parents or his parents no, or their I, parents. You're right. It's just stupidity is like right. actually yeah. They might oh. be they might be a real smart person, but that's a stupid act. Um Go ahead, tell me. So now, I, you, now you got me fucking going. I did. So I'll I'll bring it down to a lighter end. No, I was I like, uh, I like going. I was um well this this leads into it. I All just right. uh told Josh about uh the movie Idiocracy. And, uh, any yeah, of you our, did. Any of our listeners out there? Uh, hey, we have a we have a uh, looks like a new tune in here from Mr. Eric Porter. What if we are all having the same collective dream? Shaka rocks. Get your micronutrients, fellas. Peace. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Eric. Thanks, I appreciate man. that, man. Um, yeah, I really do. So, uh, uh, you know, we're just in that um, idiocracy. So that movie was just, uh, I think it was like 2005 or so. But uh, anybody that hasn't seen it. I haven't. It's an interesting movie to watch right now, I think. Um, it's, a, you know, definitely a comedy. And, uh, you know, it's just interesting. It kind of breaks down how uh, people that are smart tend to uh, hold out on having children. Meanwhile, people, I mean, you know, not to, uh, you know, put people, you know, Big families is all good and stuff, but, uh, um, you know, seems to be lower IQ multiplying more rapidly. Uh, and you fast forward the world about 500 years and uh, suddenly um, we're full of idiocracy. But anyway, it's a good it's a good uh, good story. The president is a uh, like WWE superstar kind of guy, you know, and. Uh, just some good stuff. Idiocracy. Check it out. What did you think of that? I, I showed you the trailer. You, I might watch that good. movie sometime. Because the trailer was funny. The trailer's pretty good. cool, yeah. Your boy yeah. Terry Crews is in it. Yeah, um, he's the president. He's that guy that dances with his boobs. The He's that big weightlifter guy. Like, yeah. Yeah. And he has a lot of, I see he does a lot of inspirational stuff. Yeah, and, and he like, had a TV show. He's a pretty good actor. Yeah. Yeah. And a good speaker, too. He's yeah, got, he's oh, got, for sure. He's got some good things going on, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, uh... So, uh... Mike Judge, the guy that does, uh... What did I say? Oh, Beavis, Beavis and Butthead. Butthead. Okay, so he's yeah, the guy, so the creator. He, yeah, he created that, too. He created a couple other things, too, but Beavis and Butthead was one of his big, uh... So one of the funny parts about it was in the future, uh... Um, Wouldn't that be a good time for MTV to bring that back? Right now. Well, it, 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 it has been for a long time. I'm not sure what the reason is. What? Who knows? Oh, it's like, been why? a good time to bring it back? Well, it had, yeah, it's like... Well, I think a lot of the reason um, that had to do with them watching a lot of music, music videos. Music videos. And so now it, MTV doesn't, like, I don't know. Why hasn't anybody else, like, picked that up as far as... Is why Be hasn't why any... isn't Beavis and Butthead on Netflix? I don't... Or, like... Oh, I don't know. Or like, I'm sure you could, like the old syndicated ones, I'm sure you could watch the old ones. Right. Um, I don't know why MTV hasn't, this would be a great time for them to throw out some music videos again. 
instead of just reality TV and I mean, ridiculousness is is a good show to watch because there's a lot of crashing and messed up stuff like what's going on. But um, everybody likes a good music video, right, man? The '90s were wa- yeah. walloping with them. You know what I mean? Yeah, there was. Uh... It was a good time. I mean, they had them in the '80s, but the '90s are really like they really picked it up, man. Grunge and 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 West and um, East Coast rap, like and a lot of a lot of creative things, like um, yeah. A lot of creative videos, you know. To this day, though, I think that the best. Uh, what was Dario? Was it was it what the was the best video? Or whatever. <laughs> they had all kinds of cool shows. But on. now, obviously, everything's like a video. Like they have, um, like YouTube is just full. Like it, it's like it just moved. Like it used to have that central station. Yeah, but you, but you could like, just go to the station though, and why? You know what I mean? You don't have to. And they give enough, And you got some VJs. They had some pretty cool. St- I don't know. I guess I was young. No, I, I, I guess agree. I was young and it was cool then, but I, I agree. Like, but what I'm saying is they've evolved in like making music videos. So now like I believe that the king of of music videos, the band is the OK Go. You ever uh, heard of uh, OK Go? Yeah. Well, have you ever seen their videos? Um of anything that they do is I pretty I think you showed me a video once. Like, yeah, pretty spectacular. Were a, uh, what were stuff. they? They were out in the desert in a caravan or something i don't know you the one me. where they uh the one where they played a whole song like a you know, man i always forget what they, what they call that um you did that's the one but it was like yeah they basically set up their song they get into a car yes and they do the song literally like closing the doors as the beat and then the dude starts strumming the ukulele and then the car goes and it has all these uh all these things set up with like bars off that when it goes by, it would hit pianos and you know, right in the spot where it would give the right note. You don't remember the name of that it song? It would get to the guitars. Um, yeah, I do. It's called uh, uh, that was a cool video. You showed needing, it to me, needing and getting that's what it is, needing and getting right. Um, perfect song by OK Go for our time. If you check that up, yeah, needing is one thing and getting is another, right? Um, you get your check yet. No, oh. like I said, I don't. I don't know. I didn't get mine either. He's no, too hold. busy tweeting. Uh, I believe it was. Um, He's too no, busy that, doing that, uh, news conferences and tweeting to mail me my well, check. Munchen, M- 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 whoever that guy is, press the secretary. Oh, um, he said like because they question. He's like, oh, they'll you know we'll be people will be getting paid in three two weeks, weeks. Oh. two weeks, <laughs> and then then he had to clarify it that it was. Uh, it was if you have direct deposit. So if you already set up with direct right, deposit, right. then you will get your money. If you don't They're sending have you direct a check. deposit, then you're getting a check. And get then, that fucker Pony Express. And they can only cut uh, it's something like 20,000 checks a week or something like that. Like some number about they can only do so many a week. So in yeah, that. They're in busy. That, so whoever's not on the direct deposit gets on that list. And it could be pushed out, um, you know, 20,000 right. 20, people at June a time. 2021. So if they do it by name, letter, then if you're a Z, then you might not get paid. Right. Got my couple. check in 2021. June. Yeah, a couple of years. Rent's late, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man. Okay, go. That's okay. our hot topic today. Okay, go. And they had a I I found out about them from uh, I was listening to NPR and they just like randomly and they were on there and they were interviewed I like NPR and they played clips from their uh, their album it was the one uh, uh, of the blue of the color blue oh something like that um but it was interesting because a part of the interview was that they had made like a viral music video, which is kind of why they got into these high end music videos. And right. if anybody can remember, it was something about um, the video was a like a bunch of um, uh, walking machines. What do they call those? Treadmills. It was a treadmill video. <laughs> and they were like, you know, treadmill. they did this whole thing where there was like three you know, treadmills for all the guys in the band and the way they set them up and. And it was just a pretty cool video. Um, and then they, they actually ended up touring all over the world, you know, as these young guys. And then after three years of straight touring literally all over the world, they didn't quit. Oh. They got, you know, it's time to go home and, you know, reboot what's happening. And they're like these guys going home to their, uh, you know, like their their parents' houses, you know, like places where they, 
it's you know they're all of a sudden back up. and you know they're like whoa you know we just went through all that so then they ended up making this really cool uh album i think musically there's a lot of uh synthesizers and like the mini moog sound and uh right yeah really really cool i, I like the music a lot i like huh. the words to the songs i like the grooves um i tried to uh, yeah i dig them i I listen to some of their. I don't. Know, I think I found like a couple songs I like yeah. out of their. Uh, it's hard. For, yeah, people don't impress. It's me. all that. Uh, yeah, a lot of bands don't impress um, me at all. Yeah, I honestly, I I looked at this album as you know, I think there was like twelve songs on it or whatever, and I I really think that um the whole thing was good. The whole thing was good. Like huh. every song was was cool, man. But you you know, I'm also into. Uh, oh, I I'm not into like. I don't know. Tell me. Music to me, I like things that like push the barriers as far as uh, that it's not too overly poppy. Like as far as like uh, you know, lyrically, musically, that it's not just like your standard thing. So I I enjoy um, you know things with synthesizers and weird sounds. Right. You know things that go. Wow. So we like band co- Ween's too poppy for you? No, no. Ween Ween's awesome. They're definitely awesome. Um, because they're not, it's, it's, uh, they push the borderline of mainstream. In fact, uh, you know, Ween's whole thing, especially their first like three albums were, uh, quantity over quality. So they just like would put 20 songs on an album. Right. Some of them would be like a minute and 30 seconds of just like. Some but they did wild thing. shit though. Like, and they, that's what I mean. And they then, would slow the, uh, they did a lot of that on a four track too. Right. And, and then they, those songs evolved too. Like, right. um, you know, I remember introducing like Ween albums to friends, you know, even even musician friends, and they, you know, they're like, "Oh yeah, that's cool." But then when they heard like live Ween, they were like, "Oh, I get it." Yeah, like, because they're fucking wild, right? Live, so it, it's just one of those things where, um, yeah, where like their their albums aren't necessarily what. Same with like the Grateful Dead, really. Like nobody like. Grateful Dead fans are just like listen to Grateful Dead albums. It's right, like you're right. listening to the live stuff, right? And it's like Ween's in that same world where it's like their albums are just kind of to do- document them and make them songs, but then you know you really get the good versions that are uh, live. live, live, which is yeah one of those things that makes like why I did Sonic Gardens and what my my goals are were not as much to become a. Uh, a recording studio as it was to so become a re- live recording, live recording. Studio where you could capture bands live and you know the multi-camera angle just like right. you saw with and you don't have light. to be some big time band to be able to afford that right like, like if like these big time bands that do all that you could be some little band that just plays right. bars and stuff and come down here and be awesome but record it too yeah but get a get the get that quality audio uh, and video quality audio video combo live like i said that uh, that um and it's a nice little roomy place down here too it's not like it's a little cupboard or no it's a big room with another big room right next to it it's it's uh, yeah i mean it's really spacious it's set up perfect for uh private parties and uh you know a smaller venue almost like a private venue is how i would think of it right like, oh per- you know, there's yeah. a hundred person capacity so it's like yeah and it's a bigger floor than like um, bars around here but it's not too big either right it's not like huge and your sound in your sound booth back there so yeah you, i got so- a whole a whole sound room with a you know a 32 channel studio live uh presonus uh recording station man it's like nice stage it behind is so me, cool behind the uh, sun and the moon and yeah the so that lake. Th- that track of uh red light of shaka that one was um you know that was all live the audio was live the video was live uh uh nate cole was controlling the soundboard as well as the uh video transfer yeah, he where does he good was at uh, that. he was uh you know adjusting the uh, um the different camera angles i think we had like four different angles that right. we were able to capture and yeah, we uh, got cameras everywhere in here yeah so there's right a, close a, back there yeah, over man. my head yeah man it's cool so we've uh that that was a huge step um you know something i've been working and on then for corona hit and then corona hit my, my, and, uh, my corona and like i said i'm i'm so thankful that we were able to uh you know capture that because if we didn't capture what i did that um march 15th 
we wouldn't then have I red eye. I still would have been, uh, yeah, red, red eye. <laughs> but um, I still, uh, I still would have been wondering if I could pull it off. You know what I mean? And I would have been right. really itching to try it, which I'm still itching to try it and to continue to grow it. But um, but you know, I was just so happy that uh that I pulled it off. That's all. You know what I'm saying. All right. Oh yeah. What happened? No, I don't know. I was just like, something? all right, seg segue. What do you want to? Uh, should we? Um, well, if you got. What um, do you think? I don't. I. I'm. What do I think? Um. Well. I think that uh, people still uh, get on the interweb and just post any anything they can think of that's stupid. Um. I think that. I also think that people don't read what they're posting a lot. You know how Ryan always says his dad, like if he sees something, he don't read it, he just posts it or whatever. A lot of the times. <laughs> Every, but he doesn't post bad stuff. But but he, but Ryan was saying his dad does that sometimes. But <laughs> I see people posting stuff and they they like they post it like it's a bad article. But uh, So if you hit it and read the article, it's totally like, I saw one today, they posted it, and they were like trying to pick on something, but I read the article and it was totally not picking on it at all. Like they, they, if they would have read they the article, it before they, if they would have read the article, they definitely would not have posted it. Right. Um, because they, they also, when they posted it, they wrote some unbelievable, or yeah, they wrote something too. Um, but it was totally, uh. Not what they were thinking. Um, I just, uh, we got another comment from uh, uh -oh. the great Eric Porter. He just wanted to uh, ask, what is that little gizmo that you're screwing around with up there? It looks like a drill. Is that a drill, Josh? This? Did he really <laughs> say that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, and he uh, digs your shades, especially the red rimmers. All right. Yeah. Hey, Eric. How are you, man? You know, uh, I hope you're doing well, man. This is one of the I things. I hope you're staying safe. Anybody that knows Josh knows that, um, you know, he's wound up. He's wound up a little tight, and he likes to have little things to fiddle with and play with on his desk here. So. Yeah, like I was saying yesterday, I whack, like, when I'm, when I get to a certain point in my head, I guess, like, when I get talking about something and it gets me, like, more motivated than when I'm just uh, sitting there. I start hit. I I do the old tap on the shoulder, or like that one video when when that fight was going on, and I and and I knew, leg. yeah, and I'm and I'm just racking on Gino's leg or whatever. Like I get, it's kind of an excitement thing, but I, my attention span's a little different, I guess. It's been that way my whole life, so I'm used to it. Some people aren't, but yeah. So I mess around with shit just to keep my like. Even while I'm talking or whatever, I got so much going on, man. My my brain does. It's like it wants to do a hundred different things, and I can talk and and look at this thing, and I'm also playing with it. Yes, it's a drill here, man. Um, and now you got a phone call. So I hope you're having a good day, Eric. Yeah. All right, we got Ryan calling in. Ryan. Oh, he heard me talking. Warner, about we're gonna his call father. you back, bud. Me talking about his father, Brian. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Hey, are you gonna do it like you did with Gabe? Uh, or, or the kid from Kelly, the California you want, kid? You want me to do it that way instead? I don't know. I don't, did it work that way? Could he really hear me? Gabe could because I had this volume turned up in here. Yeah, so that's it, what I'm saying. Like, work could, you want to try that or sure? As soon as I can figure out. Tell Warner he's only got ten minutes, so make it. Better get it all out. He's he's on a ten let ten a time. Hey man, he took his time today. Oh man, won't call him. I'm trying to find like the call that just came in. Oh, you need his number? We'll give it to the people. Yeah, <laughs> I got it. All right. All right.
Hello. Yo. Yo, Mr. Warner, what's happening? What's up, Megan Needs Show? The hell are you doing? Can you hear Josh? Yeah, oh yeah. All right, I got him just blasting through my speakers in this yeah. uh, control room. So He's in there listening work. to me. I was just singing to him off the of air. Nice. Nice. So uh, what, no, what's... I've been watching. I've been watching the show. I made a couple comments. Oh. Yeah, no, I see I that. I, I brought it up. Oh. I, brought I didn't it up. see it. Oh. oh, you just threw another one. Just loves rimmers. <laughs> That's for you, buddy. Red rimmers. Josh loves them. Yep. Yeah. No, but it's funny because I was, you know, I was just gonna let it ride because I knew it was getting late in the uh, in the uh, in the show. But then Josh uh, or Eric brought up, you know, Josh fidgeting, and uh, I just. Uh, oh, okay, you got so some stories. We have this. We have this friend from Colorado, and uh, oh boy, so when Josh jokes around. He has a radar for your nipples, right? He knows where your nipples are. I think, I think he sits around and like while he talks to you, he doesn't listen and just looks through your nipples the whole time. <laughs> we, when he has a joke or a punchline or something to make you feel insecure, he's like, "Oh, how about that? That's right up your alley." Boop. And uh, so anyway, he did it to someone who we barely know, and the dude's like, "Hey, man," he had to like pull him aside, and I didn't know what they were talking about. I overheard the conversation of this dude telling Josh in a nice way, "Don't ever do that again." Is I'm self conscious about it. And I'll murder you. And uh, <laughs> but what I thought happened, I thought Josh grabbed this guy's girlfriend's ass or something. You know what I mean? Or did did it to his girlfriend. So I was like, oh, shit. So I, you know, I kind of came out once the conversation was over. I came out of the van. I but, did it again, though, man. I, oh, that was the thing. I was like, dude, I was like, what did you do, dude? What did you do? And Josh like, oh, man, you know me. I'm just, I can't help it. I just, it's what I do. I can't, you know, I just, <laughs> it. I just say a joke. And the first thing I'm like, move nipples. And uh, I was like, oh, so you did it to him? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, wow, he's pretty pissed. And he's like, oh, he didn't like it, and this and that. And uh, five minutes later, right in, you know, right in front of everyone, Josh says the joke, just leans over. How about that? What you doing? Get out there, there, bud. Beep. And he's got, yeah, got him. The funniest thing, man. But, yeah, he's, uh, as soon as you mention it, you fidgeting and not being able to sit still, it's, uh, it's true. It's true. He lets you know. It's like his punchlines are 30% physical. Yeah, <laughs> he's got to reach out and touch somebody. Oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, but listen, I I wanted to, earlier. You guys mentioned the workforce going back to work. Oh boy, here yeah, we go. Yeah, go Mis ahead, Mister Know It All. That's my. Well, no, <laughs> that's the that's purpose of the show. Part. We're all know it alls. You were to, if you were to test people going back to work, <laughs> you would have to like test them every day before they came in. Yeah. I, I, you're talking about? Oh yeah, you didn't hear the part yeah. where I said you're fired if you if you test and you're good and you work and you work and you work and then all of a sudden you come in and you tested positive because you were out hanging out with some buddies and you came like, to work and you test positive, you're done. Yeah, see that. Find a new job. <laughs> right, that's what I wanted to. Uh, Those are the times you know, we're to, in. To, to mention is is you know testing like like having to be like a drug test. You know, let them pass one test, be a guard, you can come back to work. You know, you got to test them every day and not taking temperature. Right. You, you know do that because like they, they, they supposedly tests. have those 15 minute tests. Yeah, well, so, who does? What? Who has those? Oh, they have them. They're out there. Oh, I thought, I thought after the federal cut of spending, that we're not going to see any more tests. Like all the tests that are out there are going to be used and then we're going to be screwed as far as tests go. Well, I mean. Think, you know, like, the more think people about get, all the companies. Sorry, if think, we if we just didn't test anybody, then we wouldn't have all these numbers. That's right. the way I see it. Right. No one would right. know the deaths. You chalk the death up to something else. He says. Yeah. Well, what I got another they? math another math question for you. Oh boy, here we go. For, for eight. <laughs> oh. That's that's his line. Oh, oh boy. boy, that's yeah, what yeah, you've been oh, missing really? out. No, no. That's what you're missing yeah. out when uh when uh he can't talk. And heckle everything yeah. you say. Yeah, I could just imagine him saying it, like when uh, when Rhino was on the phone. Rhino's like, "Well, actually, I wanted to say something about that." Oh, what you oh here boy, we here we no. go. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, because you know, not many people are more educated than Josh, so you know he has a right to do that. Well, I, let's know? not get carried away. But, uh, <clears throat> no, my thing is with all these numbers and all these deaths, right? Um, so the average death in America from the top 10 leading causes of death, um, 
it's it's almost one percent, right? Of Wait. of our population dies every year anyway. Now, is that number is that still happening? Are they taking that into account? Or like with these new numbers coming in? Or is it like do they just think that those deaths aren't happening? You know what I mean? Because people are quarantined or whatever. I don't know, because a lot of it's heart disease and and stuff like that. But where does that where does the almost no, it's almost three million, yeah, one percent. It's almost three million. It's like it's like two million seven hundred thousand people die normally with not COVID related. Yeah, so I imagine that that's just going to increase the numbers. There's going to be some overlapping cases of uh, of uh, actually, I got I got Ryan as your entire background. Yeah, you can see that now, so you can almost oh, like pick his like nose on there. Nice, it's like um, I'm painting him. Yeah, I gotta say, hey, for those for those of you who are looking at that picture, <clears throat> um, that's some shakedown. In, in the answer to your question is yes. I wake up and my hair looks like that. All, Good all two are now. Just, it just and it doesn't stay that way. I don't use any products. Oh it's boy, kind of beautiful yeah, thick head of hair you have there. <laughs> now, uh, it kind of the animal expert and your painting. You get the irony of it all. Uh, yeah, irony. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, like usually, irony. if 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 we were gonna call somebody the animal expert, wouldn't they be at the fucking zoo? True. Not oh painting. yeah, you get it. Anyway, right. we're not it's that. a lot cooler when I don't have to explain oh, everything to you, Warner. That, that whole animal expert thing came because I sat down to sports trivia. I know. And I was like, um, you might as well be asking me, you know, how to pronounce words in Latin. You know, like I'm not going to have any chance. So I, I mentioned because we always, you know, Emmett, we wouldn't make them watch the nature shows. <laughs> right. But, you know, nickname stick, man. I know, especially when I'm better around. That than, better that than the other ones, you know what I mean? It'd be weird if you just, you know, called me fag the whole time. It'd just be a strange nickname. to. Right, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't do that to you. I was ready for a new nickname. Those are your personal choices. Not. <laughs> I'm getting chased around by my kid. But, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to call in quick just to let you guys know I was watching and keep up the work. And were you talking about OK Go earlier? Yeah, man. That man, I tell you what, Josh's taste in music is it's I feel sad for him sometimes. It's like a picky eater that can't enjoy good food or any other food other than like chicken nuggets and french fries. You know, yeah, I mean so much there's so much good food out there. But yeah. uh, okay, go man, yeah, I caught the tail end of that and I thought that's what you were talking about, but man, I think they're great. And I listened to a bunch of their stuff. It's I don't know, they're I, I You just didn't get into it. Their lyrics ain't cool for me. I think the lyrics are are really cool. I mean, man. I don't know. I, I it's been a while because I yeah, gave when up the on. When morning them. comes, that was a good song. Yeah, man. Gave up. Skyscrapers, on them. dude. Yeah. They're, uh, but they're, they're really they're kind of like Coldplay. You know, they're 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 really creative and everything like that. But they're very Coldplay. So yeah, it keeps there them. You it have keeps it. them out of the. Uh, it keeps them out of the mainstream. Like you're not going to hear their songs on the radio every day. But. Um, Cold you know that's play. the that's the music uh, I particularly Wait, man. Enjoy. I'm not whatever. I'm not saying you're a bad person because you listen to that. Oh, I hear you. You'd be a bad person if you listen to Miley Cyrus. Don't right. say that. That would that would make. That would make she's got some person. hits. She's got some good <laughs> stuff. She got a hell of a voice. She's got a really <laughs> long tug. So there's another another breakdown of Josh. He will never like if you're if you have a point and you're trying to prove something. He, he, I'm surprised he's not a Trump supporter. <laughs> not even a Trump supporter, man. Because you know, you know, because normally Josh's response should be, oh, Trump, best president ever, isn't he? Isn't he best one? That's what they're saying. Even he can't he stoop just, that low. He's just the best. Yeah. Oh, God. I would For hate. A joke. We've listened to music together, and there are certain people that I can't stand. Like, and, and Josh is oh, but I love him. I love him so much. I think I'm going to play him right now. I, I just, I just, oh yeah, listen to that. There's a real singer for you, you know. So if he wanted to be the troll that he typically <laughs> is, no, but I listen. I <laughs> listen. I like some of them. Uh... Okay, go. Well, no, but I'm the what Warner's talking about. Like some of them songs, he's talking about like some of the '80s songs and uh, oh yeah, stuff that I like. What's that? Uh... What was that? Uh, what's that, what the hell is that song we were listening to in Indiana? And you're like, if you play this, um, man, 
Oh, about uh, Pina Colada or something? That one? Oh, my like... God. I hate that song. Oh, oh man. I played well, that at Shakedown, a... and they loved it. There's an interesting thing it. about uh, Pina Colada because, you know, that's the story that you got to listen to all the lyrics I, to, it... like, get the whole the whole uh, catch at the end. You right. Know? It's his girl. And he that's was... that they both are trying to go on an affair because they're not happy. Yep. And they end up finding each other. Wonder... Realizing that they were into the same things all along. Right. They just had a bad way of communicating. See, Warner, even Angelo. No, Angelo knows a good oh, song no. when he hears it. No, he, he, yeah, I get the song. Like, <laughs> I understand it. Except he's, he's trying to put it in the same category as, um, like, ironically catchy songs for people to dance to on Shakedown. And, like, uh, what's that, uh, Whitney Houston. I yeah, wanna yeah. I want to dance with somebody. That one's always a hit, though. You play yeah, that, that one's anytime. You play that anywhere. And play that at a brings... funeral and people dance. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. So what Josh does is when it's time for that song, when it's time for a hit, he plays the Pina Colada song. You know? And then it's like, Jesus. And all of a sudden, it's like a bunch of 55 year old couples dancing in front of Hey, Josh man. Josh is loving it. They so need. <laughs> They love it. You got to get, yeah, exactly. You They're tipping please. me and stuff, and I'm not even the DJ. We're so, we're out of, yeah, come on now. Yeah, but, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh. You'll do anything no, for yeah, a Josh, tip. Josh is a hard time. Hey. a hard time. Anything that's even close to mainstream, other, unless it's like a controversial mainstream, like uh, Taylor Swift. But don't say loves. that I don't get oh, that. Okay. I Tell him I get that shakedown just to pop and yeah, he does. Just a oh, we have dance parties Cincinnati until like two thirty in the morning on a Monday. We had that place yeah. rocking. Oh, it's it, I tell you what, fish fans, they're just primed for nineties anything, and it's uh. But think about it, man. Like, and I don't know, man. Like I've had radio stations play you know hit after hit of the 90s and i was like oh my god like i forgot about this one and that's josh every song he even played informer remember that yeah and they loved that it. was in cincinnati oh dude people went nuts man they loved it they were going yeah. nuts and you oh know you know about? this song come on i'm all i'm old <clears throat> i know it i know it but uh but yeah he's always He's got that, but yeah, no, we disagree. Like on the, well, this is another thing. When you ride with Josh in the car, like you don't get to pick songs. Like there's not that. He's the DJ. Like, oh, I'll play one, and then you play one, and I'll play one, and you play one. It's Josh's way to do it. Is he plays one, and you're like, hey, can I play one? He's like, oh, no, you know, not yet. Let this album play. And it's like, oh, can I, you know, can I play one now? I want it. This reminds me of the song you might like. Can I play one? <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. And then you're in that I position where you're trying to show him a I'm song. Sure, yeah. Right, yeah. you're, you're trying you to show him a song, good one. and you're looking for his reaction, like we were talking about. Right, Does he like right. it? Does he like this song? Being self-conscious. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Look, okay, you can play it. I'm just gonna put my headphones on real quick. Just let me know when it's over. Yeah. <laughs> That's how Josh listens to music. That's our sharing and caring time in the car. He has, you know, you got to give the guy uh, credit because he's been making uh, mixtapes forever. And you know, oh, every, have, so many, so many people out there that have, uh, you know, had uh, his mix CDs and mix tapes, and uh, you pop them in, and man, he usually customizes them for whoever he's making them for. He kind of like uh, adjusts them to whatever their fancy is. And I'll tell you, I've definitely got some uh, mix tapes from Josh that, um, you know, hear a ton of music that I just had never heard before. And, and oh yeah, and, and he makes sure he randomizes it so he doesn't like play one song into the next. Right. Now he'll do is he he'll make sure that every song is a cold splash of water to your face. Like there's no comfortable introduction to the That's next right, song. Man. It's like you get used to one song and you're like, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's over, and then it's something, some crazy Ween song, or you know, uh, some real lame '70s song. You know, like he he played like <laughs> uh, knocking around the zoo. James Taylor, remember yeah, that song? It is. It's a one of Real, it, one of his not great. Knocking around the zoo, blah blah. Tuesday a Sunday afternoon. afternoon. Just a normal James Taylor song, and then after that, just the weirdest, most eerie Ween song. 
and then you know some gangster rap song and then taylor swift well that's how listen so my theory was is like i would put songs on tapes that people would know right but there was ones that they wouldn't know and they've never listened to so you get them like you're saying you get them so you play a song that you know that they'll know and then they'll, they'll like so their chances of skipping this next song aren't as high as if you just came out with the these songs that they haven't heard and they won't give it a chance and then right. you give it a chance and then you're like oh 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 or sometimes it works that way and it's good or sometimes like if it's a person like you you know you listen to it so much you know when to skip the next song <laughs> yeah that's true i just couldn't help but compare like right now if you listen to you talk about it it's almost like you know it's like josh is with women you know or anything like that and then like he's not very subtle you know what i mean he never tries to butter you up first before he says something he doesn't like there's no manipulation factor you know what i mean like before i play a song i let you know where i heard it and why i like it uh like i'm like you know listen for this listen for that i i, I preface it you know just to butter him up and uh What's well, kind of hard to talk about with my wife looking at me, but same Ooh. thing I do with, you know, when I talk to women, I'm not just coming out and be like, what's up, I'm Josh, it's me, woo, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it's like that with music. Josh wants to hit you in the face with it and come out guns blazing, and if you like it, you like it. If you don't, it's not on him because he's like, yeah, probably too hardcore for you anyway. You know, it's, like, you know, it's, it's not that you, you know, it's the same thing. Like, you know, his wardrobe and his personality, he's probably like, yeah, I'm probably too hard for you to handle anyway. You might have liked me if I cared to make you like me, but I don't care to make you like me. I'm me. Woo! Yes! Yeah! Yeah, <laughs> boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. We spent some time together. Yeah. Quite a bit. Oh, that's my ten, my 10 minutes is up. My alarm just went off. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, boy. Yep. Yep. No, I, I, is I it dinner? Want, you, already you, you already ate? You already ate? We're sitting down to dinner right now. Oh, the whip is out. Right now. The whip is out. And that was me. I don't know. I'm sure you heard Emmett laughing for like 15 minutes. That was me babysitting. I just run around in circles upstairs in one room and out. Keep him busy, right? But, yep, keep him busy. And then he doesn't have to, he can't go on a little, go in the other room and get in the mischief if you're just, if he's up to you. Yep. Chasing yeah, dad. All I do is, is, is act like I'm amazed that he's catching up with me. And then I just I turn around. I was like, whoa. I was like, get out of here. And I just run further. Or I chase him and just I'm amazed by how fast he is. And he likes that so much that we can do that for hours. As long as I'm still surprised that he's so fast. I'm like, how did you do that? Oh, but he's I fast. Say, how did you do that like 400 times? And that's how I babysit. Ooh. The babysitter. Oh, sorry. Not, she, she just said, I'm not babysitting because it's my own kid. <laughs> oh, that's right. You oh. cannot call it babysitting. Yeah. You oh, got some explaining I, I, I to do. You better let you go. Right. Stacy going to whoop you. Parenting. Oh, yeah. Parenting. parenting. I'm new at being a grown up. Right. Yeah, you are. All right, bros. It's, uh, it's dinner time, man. But uh, it was fun watching the show. I'll uh, catch you guys tomorrow. All, All right. right. Thanks, Ryan. Peace. Peace. Yeah, buddy. Later, bros. Later. All right, guys. I'm going to kick you guys another uh, video here. All right. And uh, we're going to back on out. And we're going to back on out. So we're going to close this baby off. Uh, you know, thanks, everybody, for tuning in, listening to us. And, uh, and uh, you know, we're having, a, we're having a great time. We are. We like it. We had some comments today. We yeah, some, we did uh, a bunch. Some, if you want uh, to know something real dark before we leave. Okay, go ahead. Worldwide. Yeah. We'll just leave them with this, though. Just, I mean, reality's reality. Worldwide, 95,047 deaths. Just just so you know. If you believe oh, or don't believe. Hey, life is life. Um. <laughs> so we wish, hope everybody uh, safe, uh, safe, safe, night. safe times. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, and we'll see you tomorrow. Right tune around, in. Uh, you should tune in if you want. Right around three thirty. I know we've yeah. been saying three o'clock, but it ends up being three thirty. So us tomorrow a will be time. our last three thirty, and then Saturday uh, we'll let you know for sure. But Saturday is probably like four thirty-five or something. Like hey, that. we got a call coming in. I think we're gonna take this. All right, take it. You're live on the Manganese Show.
Uncle Joey calling in. Hey. How are you guys doing out there in the podcast world? We're doing good. Where are you calling from, Uncle Joey? Are you there? Yeah. Playing? Hello? Hi, how's you, how you doing? Uncle in the, Joey. Uncle Joey, how you doing? I want to see. So, uh... Podcast world. Keep eating your garlic. Yeah. Keep that coronavirus juju away. <laughs> Appreciate what you're doing out there, podcast world. Uncle Joey here, cocksuckers. <laughs> Uncle Joe had to go. All right. Well, Sweet. Nothing like a, you know... Like you said, anybody can call in anybody here. Call Give in. us any update, anything you want to say. Uncle we'll take Joey it, man. Joey sounded like he had a load in his throat or something. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right, guys, we're going to close this out with a uh, tune from Pep and Jeff session from All right. uh, uh, three three years ago. We did this song, and this was a uh, April, right? A Back version. Yeah, almost exactly three years ago. Uh, we got my dad, Pep. And uh, Jeff Rasmussen to come in and uh, play with me and Chris. And we did a little take one, learned a couple songs. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, and we did it. So this was uh, our version of Beaver Meadow, Ooh. Jeff's uh, original tune. And there's some, uh, some great lyrics, including the opening lyric, which is, uh, I've been on Porcelain Ridge early in the morning. Right. He so, ladies and gentlemen, left his heart out there. Sonic Gardens Radio, Manganit Show. Uh, this is Pep and Jeff performing Beaver Meadow, Thanks Sonic for Gardens us. Radio, Manganit Show. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.